Dating tip number one, hey, just don't put your life on hold when you start into a new relationship. A lot of times people get a, a new date and they're excited, a new relationship, and they just kind of put everything else to the side and that new person comes to the top of the list. And Mark 12, 30 uh, is real clear. We gotta put God first with our whole mind, heart, soul, strength. And, and then second is, is love others. And, and the others is not just that person you're dating. So just don't put your life on hold. Don't put your friends to the side, your responsibilities to the side, your other relationships to the side, just to prioritize a new person. Uh, keep a good balance. Uh, don't don't uh, don't change your life that radically when you get into dating. That's tip number one for dating. Tip number two for dating: use your brain. Keep a good balance with your mind. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 is very clear uh, that our heart can be deceitful and romantic love a lot of times is exciting, it's thrilling, uh, there's so many possibilities but it can be very deceiving, it can put on the blinder. So use your brain, uh, maybe look, it's a good, good time in a new relationship to look back at past relationships, to learn from that, to kind of hit pause even as you're in a new relationship, to, to never stop kind of analyzing and assessing where you're at. Uh, ways to do better, um, but keep your brain engaged. Be careful that those feelings, especially that romantic love, can be uh, deceptive along the way. So don't put the blinders on. Be very careful with physical intimacy. Uh, that can really blind you as well. So that's tip number two. Tip number three for dating, only date a Christian. If you're a Christian, only date Christians. The whole purpose of dating or courtship or whatever approach you put to analyzing a relationship, uh, evaluating a relationship, initiating a relationship, uh, dating, that purpose is really geared towards marriage. And God's real clear in the end of 1 Corinthians 7 that when you marry someone as a Christian, the big qualification is they're a true believer, a genuine believer. And 2 Corinthians 6 is real clear that don't be unequally yoked or married together, paired together, because what you have first and foremost in common is your spiritual union with Christ. So when you're dating somebody, if you're not seeing evidence in them of being genuinely saved, genuinely in love with Christ, uh, you, you need to steer aside from that. Make sure the one you date loves Jesus. That's tip number three. Tip number four with dating, take it slow. Too often people rush into things with dating and it's really good to take it easy and slow. Listen, if the whole point of dating uh, is intentional, purposeful consideration of marriage, you know, what are you hoping to be married for? 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Then taking your time, maybe a, a two year commitment from the first date to marriage is a wise thing because in the big picture, that kind of intentionality pays off. So don't rush it. Don't rush into things physically. Don't rush into things, you know, spiritually. Don't be praying uh, right away with somebody. Um, just kind of take it slow, that first date, those first steps. Don't be talking about marriage early on. Be really intentional to set up boundaries, to have a, a way of being held accountable. Uh, so that's tip number four for dating, take it slow. Dating tip number five, set clear boundaries. You know, you are a physical creation, an emotional creation, a mental creation, uh, a spiritual creation. There's different avenues of that. And you need to be real careful, set clear boundaries so people don't run over you. Your emotions ultimately belong to Christ. Uh, your mind belongs to Christ. Your body belongs to Christ. Your spirit belongs to Christ. So guard it, be wise, be careful. Don't let anybody run over you. Um, just be very clear, maybe with some specific boundaries, even from the get-go. Maybe look back at past relationships and lessons learned. Ask some friends to hold you accountable. Keep them involved in the process. So that's dating tip number five, set clear boundaries. Dating tip number six, dating tip number six, don't play house. People give a lot of good reasons for living together, cohabitating. Uh, you know, hey, we're practicing. Hey, we love each other. Hey, we're engaged. Hey, it's better for finances and practice. But the reality is God says don't do it. It's he commands not to live in impurity. And the statistics are kind of concerning. Couples who cohabitate are 80% more likely to divorce than couples that don't. Uh, women who cohabitate are twice as likely to suffer from domestic violence. Women who cohabitate four times as likely to experience depression and 71% of women who have cohabitated would say they wouldn't do it again. So here the statistics, here the warning ultimately of scripture, God calls us to be sexually pure, um, to never even give an inkling of, of impression of sexual immorality. So dating tip number six, don't cohabitate, don't play house. Dating tip number whoops, seven, dating tip number seven, save sex for later. Um, you know, a lot of good reasons people throw out there thinking that it's a good reason to experiment, try things out. 
um, get better at sex before marriage, but the reality is lifelong committed marriage always is the best experience for sexual intimacy, sexual pleasure over the long haul. And, and that's God's command. I just encourage you on this. Uh, there's tons of scriptures about sexual immorality, but 1 Corinthians 6 uh, verses 12 through 20 is a great place to read. Don't just take my word for it. Check out what God says about the seriousness of it. Man, and if you messed up in the past, go to God, ask for forgiveness, but then moving forward into the future, have a plan, have a commitment, have boundaries, have those tough conversations. Dating tip number seven, it's worth it. Save sex for later. Dating tip number eight, dating tip number eight, fight fairly. Conflict's gonna happen, how you handle it's important. I love James chapter one, verse 19 through 20. Slow to speak, slow to get angry, quick to listen. Uh, you know, if you find yourself either maybe defensive or avoiding or just getting intense in conflict, watch out for those warning signs and practice good conflict resolution. Maybe kind of take a take a pause. You sense conflict, say, hey, let's just, let's get back to this in 20 minutes. Watch your tone when you talk about it. Uh, don't go on the offensive when you talk about it. Kind of personalize it. Say, you know, I feel this way when you do this. Um, and just really learn good ways to kind of solve conflict in a good godly way. So that's dating tip number eight. Uh, be wise with how you handle conflict. Dating tip number nine. Dating tip number nine. Keep people involved in what's going on that they might raise a flag, a warning sign if they see it, and don't ignore those warning signs. Sometimes people see something, see the problem, maybe abuse, addiction, infidelity, uh, Un irresponsibility, unfaithfulness, all kinds of different areas, and you see those warning signs, you think, well, I'll fix them, or, or they'll grow out of it, or they'll get better, and uh, the reality is, the sad reality, those warning signs a lot of times are pointing towards a long-term problem. Sometimes it's just the tip of the iceberg. So keep friends and family involved, share all the kind of the tough stuff, but watch out for those warning signs when those flags go up. Sometimes it's a good, wise time to hit pause, to back away. So that's dating tip number nine. Watch out for those warning signs. Dating tip number 10. Dating tip number 10. Be wise. Be real wise in your choices. Don't be rushed into it. Don't be blinded by sex. Don't be fooled by external things. Look, how does somebody handle uh, crisis situations? That really points to their character. And their character is ultimately who they are in private. Maybe look at the friends that person has. You can tell a lot about a person by their friends. Maybe it look at that person's past relationships. You can tell a whole lot about future relationships by how they've handled past relationships. And just overall, take it slow. Time is your friend. You don't be in a rush. No matter how old you are, don't be desperate. Don't rush into things. And keep other friends, godly friends, godly family members connected and listen and heed their advice. So number 10, just be wise. Dating tip number 11. I don't have 11 fingers. Dating tip number 11, take action. Don't just hear what God says. You gotta be hearing, you gotta be in the word. Hear what God says about relationships, especially about marriage. That's what dating is ultimately pointing towards. But then when you hear it, do it. Take responsibility, take action. Wherever you hear God calling you to do something um, or not do something, be responsible enough to obey him. He's a good father. His commands are not a burden. They're loving fatherly guidance because he cares for you. And so that's just dating tip number 11. Stay in the word hear it, but ultimately take action with it. If God tells you not to do something, don't do it. It's what's best for you. If he tells you to do something, do that. It's what's best for you. So that's dating tip number 11. Hey, you got questions on dating. There's a lot of great resources out there. Let me point you to four of them. One of them is a book called The Ten Commandments of Dating uh, by Ben Young and Dr. Samuel Adams. Great book, real simple. A lot of good godly principles in there. Two, uh, gotquestions.org, gotquestions.org. Let me say it three times, gotquestions.org. So many great questions about what does the Bible say about so many different things. Check it out sometime. Real good short biblical answers. Three, familylife.org and focus on the for family focus on the family.org both of those are great resources for marriage and family life about what god says a lot of tough questions there things that you might want uh, answers to, but you don't know who to ask. Those sometimes awkward, difficult questions. So check them out, uh, especially gotquestions.org. A lot of great resources. Dating's important. Find out what God says about it. Thank you for your prayerful support of Freedom in Christ Ministries. All of our content is made possible by you. Your generous support and financial gifts make these videos and our ministry possible. For more information on how to support our ministry, please visit www.ficm.org backslash donate.